Good evening, and welcome to Harvard Epperts Contemplative Prayer Service. It's good to see you tonight. We ask that you keep your masks on for the entirety of our service, maintain a distance of at least 10 feet from one another, and refrain from singing or speaking aloud in the service. This service is being recorded and will be available on YouTube. However, we are not live streaming and the pews are not within camera frame, so you will not be filmed. We do not have a bulletin tonight. We invite you to be fully present in each moment of our time together. This is a service filled with plenty of silence. Each period of silence uh, will be bookended by the ringing of a bell. A ring will begin each period of silence and close each period of silence. We ask you adopt a posture of prayer in your hearts during these times. We recognize for many of us, this is the first time in the building in months. Please allow the space and the presence of our church family to guide and focus your attention in prayers. In short, be here. Let yourself feel what you must feel. Attune yourself to God's presence and allow this time to be a balm for your soul. Let us begin our time of prayer. Gentle God, as we draw together in worship, open our spirits to receive your grace. Clear the distractions and the chaos from our lives and from our minds. Warm us on this cold March night with the comfort of your love. We ask all these things in the name of your Son, the name of the one who calls us beloved. Amen. And now, as we've done, as we've done before in these uh, contemplative worship services, we'll share three readings from the scriptures. Uh, after each of the readings, uh, I'll ring a bell, uh, and there'll be a time of reflection, and then a bell will sound to end that time. After the first two readings, the time of reflection will be relatively brief, 30 seconds to a minute. After the third reading, I'll invite you into reflection with some questions, some ponderings, something to guide your thinking. And then Dave will play, and then I'll, uh, Dave will play uh, some music for a longer time of reflection. After the period of Dave playing, I'll, there'll be some silence. And then I'll ring a bell again. Uh, that will end our time of reflection before we go into a time of prayer. So to start our reading off, Dom will begin. Our first reading for tonight comes from Micah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? And what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam son of Beor answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? 
shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? A reading from Psalm 143. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications in your faithfulness. Answer me in your righteousness. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing my life to the ground, making me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore, my spirit faints within me. My heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old. I think about all your deeds. I meditate on the works of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Answer me quickly, O Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Teach me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Save me, O Lord, from my enemies. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on a level path. Gospel reading for this evening comes from the 21st chapter of John, the 15th through the 19th verses. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. 
Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. Jesus said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to Peter, he said to Peter, follow me. We have many requirements in our life. Requirements of our time, requirements of our mind, requirements of our heart. You can probably list the requirements of your life. We have requirements as siblings, we have requirements as spouses, we have requirements as parents or as children, we have requirements in our work, we have requirements in our home, we have a lot of requirements. But today, we invite you to reflect on what does the Lord require of you? That's a big question because we would respond to that probably very naturally. God needs me. God requires something of me. How do we respond to a God that gives us life itself? Like the psalmist, as Sarah read, we know we never are worthy of this requirement God asks of us. And especially during, after all we've been through, we definitely remember times of old. And yet our soul thirsts, as we heard the psalmist say, thirsts for God, for to feel that redeeming power of God's steadfast love, as the psalmist said, in every morning. What does the Lord require of you in the morning to come, in the day to come? How will you find your way? How you respond to that steadfast love that awaits you in that morning. In the gospel passage, Jesus reminds Peter and us that we are called to show love to God by loving others, by tending God's sheep, by ensuring a compassionate, caring world focused on peace and justice invite you to reflect today thinking about how you show love. Love of God, love of neighbor, love of self. What does the Lord require of you?
instead of sharing our prayer concerns out loud with one another. In the interest of safety, we now invite you to use the pen and paper that are in front of you in your pews to write down those prayers that are on your hearts and in your minds. When the service is over, we invite you to place those in the offering plate at the back table by the doorway, and Herb will go over those prayers a little bit later in the week. You are welcome to put your name on your prayers if you feel so moved, or you can remain anonymous. We'll take a moment to pray in the silence, writing down those things on our hearts, and in a few minutes, I'll gather us back together with a spoken prayer. Holy God, so often the meaning of love eludes us. We are swimming in images of love as sentimentality, as a product, 
as an aesthetic. Yet you have revealed through the scriptures that love is more than a feeling. It is a transformative force and an action. Your love for us calls us to respond, caring for those whom you love, feeding your sheep. You remind us, as Dr. Cornell West has said, that justice is what love looks like in public. Lord God, help us to understand the world with your mind, to perceive existence with your awareness, and to love the, love the world with your heart. In doing so, we will be signs of your love for all creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we end this time together and, and head out into the night, remind you that we ask you to leave in silence. Uh, you can stay in the sanctuary for a bit as Dave plays the uh, ending postlude, but uh, do not congregate. We ask you to head outside. Uh, just under COVID protocol, it's better to be outside, even on a cold, cold day. So we ask you to, to head out there after the service when you're ready. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and in the love of God. And may you feel that peace and that love and that knowledge of that love, always with you, knowing that God's blessing is upon you, that God's grace is for you, and that God's steadfast love holds you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>